Thanks, guys. Cody Goodwin back in business and ready to bring you all the buzz from another weekend of black and gold athletics, including our Iowa football two-minute drill with Mr. Ben Ross. But first, we start on the diamond with Iowa baseball completing the sweep of South Dakota State this past weekend, bringing their overall record to 25-15 and 15 on the season. The Hawks continuing their hot play under first-year head coach Rick Heller, winning seven of their last ten games, including a dramatic walk-off win in the 11th inning on Friday night. We should listen into that Hawkeye production with the highlights. Brent Balbinot with the call. A 1-0. -oh. This one He's here in the right field base hit, and the Hawks will win. Day comes home, and it's a 2-1 to -one marathon, but the Hawks take game one. Baseball not the only team competing this weekend. Track and field traveling to Des Moines for the annual Drake Relays. The team crowned two champions with Gabe Holt taking first white flag in discus, throwing 60.05 meters, the only competitor to throw over 60 at the legendary blue track. Also worth mentioning is the women's 4x1 relay team breaking a 10-year-old team record on their way to the school's first 400-meter relay title at Drake. Heading back to the Diamond, Iowa softball competing in Bloomington, Indiana over the weekend, taking the series rubber match on Sunday, 3-2. Big games for both shortstop Megan Blank and center fielder Aaron Erickson as they both went yard. Pitcher Kayla Massey also in top form, tossing a complete game, allowing just eight hits and striking out four en route to her ninth win of the season. And finally, women's golf and tennis finishing up their Big Ten championships this weekend. Tennis ousted in the quarterfinals against number 17, Michigan. Junior Shelby Talcott recording Iowa's lone victory there. And golf ending their Big Ten championship run in ninth place after finishing seventh the first two days. Now, obviously, a whole lot going on in the Iowa sports world, but the eyes of Iowa City, well, they were on the gridiron this weekend. We're now joined by Ben Ross to break down the top five headlines as the Hawks finally wrap up spring ball. Ben, two-minute drill coming. You snapped in. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Same as I. Let's get to it. A lot of headlines made this spring, wow. but first and foremost might be the youthful impacts coming this fall. There's Desmond King, number 14 there. Haven't missed a beat since his showing in the Outback Bowl in January. And Derek Willie showing up on Saturday, the redshirt freshman, 210-pound underclassman, should play a major role. Had two catches for over 40 oh. yards yesterday. Indeed. Moving on to the number four, the storyline replacing the linebackers. Ben, it's very tough to replace production as opposed to talent. Yeah, well, Reggie Spearman and Quentin Austin, they may not have the numbers or the starts behind them, but they definitely have the talent. The two are making some big-time waves during spring ball and during the spring game. One thing we've seen this spring, both Spearman and Alston, a lot of chemistry between the two should be fun to watch come the fall. The third one, of course, crazy depth in the backfield. Ben, nine different scholarship running backs, and all of them are healthy. Yeah, everybody's healthy. No more of that, you know, curse on the hour running backs in Kansas area. He's looking like he could be the guy at tailback for, during the spring game. Definitely. He scored one there in the spring game. Damon Bullock, obviously another workhorse that could be used. And obviously, you can't forget about Mark Wiseman, the hammer. Number two, we're looking at the defensive line now. Last time out, we saw these guys in Tampa. LSU just gave them the business. Jeremy Hill goes crazy then for almost 200 yards. But, Ben, these guys have had one crazy spring. Yeah, you know, a lot, but still he got a lot of time to get coached up. Aside from Louis Trinka Passat and uh, Carl Davis, pretty unproven, even though Mike Hardy at defensive end has a handful of starts under his belt, too. Kirk Ferentz really high on Mike Hardy, who actually did some damage against Brandon Scherf in the spring game, making some noise in the pocket, allowing the offense to struggle. Bunch of depth there, too. But the number one, of course, is the quarterback, Jake Rudock, obviously listed as the guy, if you ask uh, offensive coordinator Greg Davis. But C.J. Beathard making some noise in the spring game a little bit. Yeah, but still, it's right now Jake Rudock's job to lose. Jake, he's the incumbent. And Greg Davis and Kirk Ferentz, they love working with those incumbents at the quarterback spot. Indeed, Jake Rudock will be uh, the second-year guy in Greg Davis's offense, the last quarterback to do that, Colt McCoy. We all know how great he was. Should it be fair to expect the same from Rudock? I don't know. He doesn't have maybe the talent that you get at a Texas football school of football, but at the same time, he's running the playbook. Kirk Ferentz's system has proven itself in the past. Could be more comfortable. Could be looking good. Interesting. It will be fun to see. That's going to do it for us. Ben seems to be out of breath, and I am out of time. You can join us here back same time, same place on Monday as we get you set for another week of black and gold athletics. But for now, Jordan and Megan, back to you guys at the desk.